So here we are at our registration desk. Typically for our obstetric patients, it's going to be the last desk on the left in the corner. This is Miss Cindy this morning. So typically what you need to be prepared for is to have um, a photo ID, your insurance card, and be prepared to tell them questions about your address, your telephone number, um, so that they can verify your information in the computer. So when you are coming in, if it's not a scheduled procedure, you will have to check in there at the check-in and come here every time. So if you've been here before, the process should be faster, but they'll still need to verify that you haven't moved since your last visit, telephone number hadn't changed, insurance hadn't changed, and so they'll want to make sure that all that information is correct. And so after you have completed the registration process, um, then next, someone will assist you to making it upstairs. That way, if, if you are needing to go to our emergency department for OB, we know how to direct you there. Hello, hello, my name is Jacqueline Weber. Again, welcome back to our virtual tour. I am one of the midwives with Chris's Trinity Clinic, and I'm here today with one of our labor and delivery nurses, Rebecca. So we right now are at Good Shepherd. We're in one of the delivery suites, and we wanted to kind of go over the basics of what to expect when you come in for your labor or your induction. I'm going to, when you first walk in the room, you're going to have a nurse with you, and she's going to kind of walk you through what to do. Typically, you're going to get a gown to put on, and they're going to instruct you to take everything off. You could always leave on the bra if you do want to keep your bra on. I would recommend just taking your panties off, and then if you have your own little gown that you want to wear, that's fine as well. But we do provide you with a gown. They're also going to give you a little urine cup. I'm sure you're familiar with this with all of your visits. We still want your urine every time, so we're going to get your urine from you as well. When you're done changing, what's going to happen next is typically they're going to want you to get into the bed, and we're going to put you on some monitors. So I'm going to kind of walk you through that. So there's two different monitors that are going to be put on your belly. One monitor, the top monitor, is going to be for your contractions. And that's going to go kind of right up here, the top of your uterus. So you're going to get these straps on, maybe. It's all right. And the bottom one is going to go where the baby's heart beats at, and that's just going to kind of depend on where we move it. These straps are not the most comfortable things, I'm not going to lie, but you'll get used to them, and it's to monitor your baby to make sure your baby's doing okay. We don't really have to. We can just kind of. So this is what it's going to be. Now, if you're going natural and you don't want to be strapped down, we totally get it, but Hospital policy, we need to at least have 20 minutes of a good tracing of your baby. As long as your baby's happy in there, we'll go ahead and take these off, and you'll have 40 minutes of free time to do what you want in the room. Now, if we're giving you Pitocin, we're inducing you, or we're giving you any kind of medication, or you have your epidural, at this point in time, you're always going to have your little monitor gone. We do have another little belly band that's, um, you kind of pull it up, and it's just a big band, and we can put the monitors inside that if that's something that you want. You can always ask for that as well. So I want to go over a few things that we have available here at Good Shepherd. One, I was just on it. This is our birthing ball. A lot of times, even if you have to stay on the monitor, let's say you have the toasting, we can set this up right near the machine, and you can just bounce away on this, and that's fine. Usually, we can keep you on the monitors just fine with that. But this is something we have available to you if you want it, request it. The other thing we have available is something called a peanut ball. The peanut bowl is more for when you're lying down. This goes in between your legs as you turn you side to side with your epidural or even without your epidural. This is going to help open up your pelvis. So we've got tons of these. We use them. Again, we've got nurses here that are very comfortable with women wanting to go natural. We're going to support your birth plan. We're here for you. Obviously, we want a safe delivery, and you might not get every single thing that you want, but we certainly try. And talking about that is how you deliver. Do you need to deliver in stirrups? No, you do not. Yeah. So this is our spot bar. You can use this to labor and to birth. So again, 
if you don't have an epidural. I mean, if you have an epidural, this would be difficult probably for you to use, but you could definitely use it for both women. Enjoy squatting when they labor and when they push. So, let me see a little help here. So you can squat, you can use this just like a squat bar. Use it just for support. So this is always available to our natural moms and our moms without epidurals while they're laboring as well. We do have traditional syrups. If you have an epidural where your legs are really numb, a lot of times it's just helpful to have these to keep, to keep your legs supported. So these are right on the side of the bed as well. So we do have your traditional syrups, but you do not need to deliver in the syrup or the bar, especially if you're going natural. Um, even with an epidural, if you want to deliver on your side, we are very accommodating to those things. And we encourage you to be involved and active in your labor. Am I missing something else? I don't think so. So the other thing I wanted to show you was our, I don't think you can see this here. So this is where your little baby's gonna go. Not right after delivery. So right after delivery, as long as the baby's looking good, we're gonna put that baby right on your chest, skin to skin, okay? We encourage skin to skin for usually that first hour at least. You get that bonding time with the baby, and as long as the baby's good, we, we, can, we can assess that baby right on your chest. Once you're done and you're ready, we move the baby over here. This is where we're gonna weigh the baby. And this is where the baby would go if we were concerned about something. We needed to uh, assess the baby quickly, we needed the NICU to come in. There was something going on. So this would be this is where your little baby's gonna go. And we'll stay in here and for the first cut a couple hours after you deliver. So that's all that I have today. This is just really basic stuff. I don't want you guys to be scared. This is a really great place to give birth. You're gonna have really supportive nurses. And we've got a lot of things available for you, whether you want a fully medicated delivery or a fully unmedicated delivery. We're here to support your delivery, what you want, um, in the safest way possible, of course. So these are some of the tools. It's not all the only things we have, but these are some of the things we have available to you. We also have a birthing tub in one of our rooms. It's actually next door to this. In the birthing tub, you're allowed to labor in the tub. You can't give birth in it, but you're allowed to labor up to eight centimeters. Again, if you're on Pitocin, we're not allowed in the tub. This would be for our natural moms, not medicated, um, baby's looking good. There are some criteria, but we have the birthing tub and it's available and it's in our next room. And we are the only ones that have a birthing tub. No other hospital does here. So we do offer that and we love that we offer that. So that's another option for you as well. So that's all I have right now. Does anybody have any questions at this time that I can answer for you? Nope. So I think the next, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to have our lactation consultant talk with you briefly about breastfeeding. That's usually a huge topic for women, especially postpartum. I do want to mention that our labor delivery postpartum are on the exact same floor. So you're just going to kind of travel over to another room, but it's all on the same floor. And we have two lactation consultants available. They're around a lot and they're there to help you successfully breastfeed your baby. And they're even there after you deliver and go home. They're still available to you. So we want you to talk with one of them now. Is Paula ready? She should be joining in. Okay. We have one of our lactation consultants joining in. Her name is Paula, and I'm going to hand it over to her now to kind of go through some of those basics with you. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, Paula, we can hear you. Okay, um, I am having trouble getting my video to turn on, so I may just be audio. Uh, my... 13-year-old tech support um, set everything up for me, but he's had to leave the house for a few minutes, so I'm without tech support here. 
Yeah, it just keeps saying video fail. All right, so I just want to say good morning to everybody. I, I am at my house this morning, so we are we are social distancing for our class, which I think is awesome that we, we have the ability to do this these days. I am um, one of the lactation consultants on staff. I've been here at Christus for about 32 years now, and um, have been a lactation consultant since 1994. So this is, this is my passion. I am passionate about being available to help new families get the very best start that they can get. When we think about breastfeeding, um, you know, sometimes what comes to our mind is the uh, internet horror stories we've heard. And sometimes what comes to our mind is, uh, you know, kind of the lovely um, medieval paintings of the, the woman in her lounge chair with the baby uh, attached. And the truth is somewhere in the middle. So I think uh, the most common question that we get is things like, you know, what if I can't get my baby to latch? What if I don't have enough milk? What if um, the baby is, um, you know, hurting me? And I think one of the best answers to all of those questions is that that mom needs a helper. They need someone who can come along beside them and help to show them some of the tricks and tips for making breastfeeding get off to that smooth start that we all want for our new mothers. So at Good Shepherd, we have an awesome staff. Our maternal child staff, which means your labor and delivery, your stork nurses, your A200 mother baby nurses, are all very, very well trained and experienced in assisting new mothers and babies to get started with breastfeeding. So the one thing that I don't want mothers to be concerned about is that there might not be someone there to help them because there is always someone there to help them. If there was that situation where maybe the breastfeeding needs were a little more complex than just, here, let me show you, place your hands here, hold your baby here. That's the how to get started, right? But if there's a little more complex concerns, we do have board certified lactation consultants that are on staff at the Shepherd seven days a week. There is always a consultant who's going to be coming in to be available to help new moms, new families get the best breastfeeding start that they can get. So if we had to answer the question, why is breastfeeding so important? Why is it that all the healthcare professionals that you come in contact with or encouraging you to breastfeed your baby. In the age of the internet, we, we kind of know the, the, the basic answers, right? We know that antibodies are so important for getting the baby's immune system started. And in the current world that we're living in, where the, the potential for viral infection is really high, we know that the breast milk has those human antivirals in it. We don't have anything in our arsenal as healthcare providers that is going to provide that level of support and protection to the baby's immune system that is present in their mother's own milk. So for us in this world that we're currently in, the number one top of the line answer is that the immune support for your newborn um, from receiving mother's own milk is huge for the baby. And having the baby directly latched at the mother's breast provides even more immune support because the mother's 
body and the baby's body, they communicate with each other. When the baby latches to the mother's breast, there is exchange of body fluids. The baby takes milk in, saliva is exposed to the breast. And the mother's immune system goes, wow, it looks like maybe this kid's been exposed to a cold. Okay, so then mother's body says, well, we're going to load up on the antibodies to treat that, help to protect against that. So the next feeding, the baby's got designer milk. Now that milk is loaded with a little more antibodies to protect against maybe that little cold virus that the baby was potentially exposed to. So we always say that breast milk is kind of designer milk. It's specifically programmed for that mother and that baby. And that's what makes it so important for long-term health. Some of the other things that you might not see on the internet, we all know things like, well, you know, it helps a mother with her to lose some of that pregnancy weight. It helps the, the baby to um, have uh, better growth and, and mental capacities. Um, but some of the other things, we know that women who breastfeed for at least six months, and that could be one child for six months, or it could be three children for two months each, we know that those moms have statistically decreased incidence of uterine cancer, ovarian problems, a decreased incidence of breast cancer. We know that those mothers have less incidence of osteoporosis later in life. And this all has to do with the hormones that are associated with breastfeeding. In infants, we know those babies have less ear infections, less respiratory infections. That goes back to all those lovely, high quality antibodies and antivirals that they get through their mother's milk. But we also know they have less incidence and please make sure you're hearing the word less, not zero. They have less incidence of things like childhood diabetes, uh, childhood cancers. They have less problems with adult onset obesity. They have less problems with um, high cholesterol or inappropriate cholesterol levels as, a, as an adult. So the choice that you make now to breastfeed your baby is a gift of health that you're going to give your baby for the rest of their life. And that's kind of amazing when you think about it. Um, the other thing is that we know that emotionally, um, the mother's body is, and her, her whole chemical makeup is primed to be in what we call heart-to-heart -heart or skin-to-skin -skin contact with the baby. Sometimes you'll hear it called kangaroo care. I just kind of personally like heart-to-heart -heart care because I, it's how it looks to me. When we bring the baby's chest to the mother's chest, then you guys, you are heart-to-heart -heart with each other. And for the baby, it's huge. You know, it does things like it helps to stabilize their, their heart rate, their respiratory patterns. It helps to stabilize their blood glucose levels but it also encourages feeding behaviors. And so some of these newborns that have just really had a rough time in labor, I mean, moms get fatigued in labor, but so do the baby. So the baby's had a really rough time in labor and um, they're tired, uh, they're kind of low on their energy level and coming heart to heart with mom gives them that boost of energy and that desire to root and reach for food. But even more interesting and, 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 and fabulous is the fact that when the baby is heart to heart with mom and the baby's breath is, is resting across mother's chest, just the baby being there raises the mother's blood uh, uh, levels of her hormones her, her lactating hormones, and it will help to speed up mother's milk. So oftentimes our nurses will come in and they'll encourage moms, you know, yes, we all know that we want the baby 
heart to heart or skin to skin at birth. But we're going to encourage you to continue that skin to skin, heart to heart time for the first three to five days or more with the baby. I think that oftentimes mothers get very concerned when their newborn is sleepy and doesn't seem interested in eating because as the mom, we, we want that baby eating. We want that baby strong and healthy. And if the baby is not showing the I'm hungry cues, getting that baby skin to skin will help to refocus the baby on feeding. So we will encourage moms to put the baby skin to skin 20, 30 minutes before the baby's ready to eat. So if you want your baby to eat about 1 o'clock, Around 12.30, slip them out of their clothes, down to just their diaper, put them heart to heart with mom. Mom, take your, take your bra off. You know, get that out from between the two of you and let you and the baby have that full skin on skin contact together. Throw the blankie up over the two of you and just let that baby rest with his ear against your heartbeat. That's all they've known since the moment the sperm hit the egg. They, they have heard your heartbeat. And just getting their ear up against your chest is so comforting and reassuring. They go just absolutely, you know, loosey-goosey there for about 20 minutes. They just lay there and snuggle and cuddle. And they look like they're in a deep sleep to you. But they are basically storing up energy and restoring their focus to prepare for the next feeding. So if you ask me, what's the best thing that I can do to get breastfeeding off to a good start? It's going to be, be sure that you ask for help. That's, that's why your nursing staff is there. That's why they spend hours and hours in continuing education to make sure that they're available and prepared to give you the very best breastfeeding help that we can. So ask for help. It is not an imposition for us. It is what we are, are dedicating our life to do. And the other thing is, is spend as much skin-to-skin -skin time with your baby as you are comfortably spending. Um, it's not logical to say to someone, oh, we're just leaving there 24 hours a day. No, mom's got to shower, pee, and, you know, maybe if she's lucky, brush her feet. We know that mom's got to have those opportunities for self-care. But anytime you can have the baby heart to heart with you, it improves your recovery, it improves your milk supply, it improves their, their desire to eat, and their focus and coordination at the breast. So that was kind of um, the questions that had been sent to me is, you know, how to get a good start and why is breastfeeding so important? But what I'd really like to do is entertain questions from you guys um, and see if there's things that maybe I could answer. Paula, we have one question um, uh -huh. for mothers of multiples or twins. The question is, do you necessarily have to supplement? So the answer is slightly complicated. But the short version is no, no mother has to supplement a healthy, vigorously feeding newborn. The thing with prematures and multiples is sometimes those babies, they're a little early, they are a little smaller, they often have slightly less energy reserve. And if mother is needed cesarean birth, which often happens with multiples, then mother's body is a little bit under some physical stress simply from needing to repair itself from surgery. And so when you combine those two things, small, slightly early, sleepy infant with mom who is physically recovering from major surgery, there are times when mother's milk supply may not be as full um, as it would be if we didn't have those other compounding factors. So it's very common for us to see small babies, multiples like twins or triplets, 
prematures needing a slight amount of supplement the first 24 to 48 hours of life while mother's body catches up with their calorie needs. I have seen many mothers of multiples who has very successfully exclusively breastfed. And that's what we're going to try and support all of our mothers to do is to be successful at exclusively breastfeeding if that's her goal for her baby and her family. But if there's a medical need for a little bit of supplement, there are many ways to supplement babies without putting an artificial bottle in their mouth. We can use a small cup. We can use syringe. We can use at-breast supplement, which we do quite a bit. And those things will provide some extra calorie support without derailing or interfering with the breastfeeding relationship that is developing and forming between the mom and the, and the babies. Does that answer your question? Yes, I believe so. Um, a, another question that's come through is about uh, ways to increase the milk supply. Okay. You know, I think that will I have enough milk is a huge concern for most new mothers. And, and interestingly enough, it really continues even, it's most alarming for moms with their first baby. But even second, third, or, or more um, babies down the road, it's still a concern for every mother because we want the best for our babies. That's how we're hardwired. So the first 72 hours or so, the first three to four days after you deliver, your body still has a high level of pregnancy hormone. And pregnancy hormone sort of suppresses the milk cells slightly. So each time you have your baby heart to heart, each time you latch your baby to the breast, each time you use a breast pump if your baby maybe is not able to physically come to the breast, those things begin to stimulate the pituitary gland to release the hormones that you need to build up in the blood supply. So as the pregnancy hormones go downhill and the breastfeeding hormones go uphill, then the milk cells of the breast are, are triggered, basically, for lack of a better word, to, to turn on milk production. So if you didn't know that there is this built-in three-day lag where your baby is going to be getting several teaspoons of colostrum each feeding, then you would be concerned that you don't have enough milk. And that's, that's not the case. Uh, colostrum is like super concentrated survival food. That stuff is powerful. And your, your baby is going to get a lot of nutritional support from colostrum. Now, after day four or five, if the mother still feels like there's not enough volume breast milk, if she's finding that she is needing to give some supplement to meet her baby's appetite needs or hunger signals, well, then, then we may need to look at, is there a supply concern? There are things we know can slow down milk supply. Um, mothers who have thyroid, low thyroid levels, mothers with pituitary hormone concerns, mothers with um, PCOS, which is an ovarian hormone condition, mothers with um, gestational or long-term diabetes often have lower hormone levels. Sometimes correcting those concerns, making sure the mother's on her thyroid medicine, making sure she's on her diabetes medicine, um, can fix a low milk supply. Sometimes we don't know why a mom has a low milk supply. Sometimes it is a nutritional need. And uh, increasing the mother's protein in her diet can help. There are things out there on the market, and I get this question a lot, um, what about lactation cookies? What about breast milk tea? What about um, fenugreek or some of the other herbal supplements? And most all of those are effective at supporting the milk supply that's established. Um, there are some that we use to try and boost a slightly low supply. If we don't think it's a hormone problem, oftentimes a nutritional supplement like fenugreek or moringa which are supplements you can get at a natural food store, um, can help to improve 
the amount of milk production in the milk cells themselves. If there's a hormone concern, there are some nutritional and herbal supplements that help to improve the pituitary health um, so that we get better hormone production. And that, when you get to that level of, of milk supply support, then you really need to be working one-on-one -on -one with your lactation consultant so that we can customize what may be the best support for that mom. Some of the things you'll hear out there though, things like drinking green Gatorade, there's absolutely no scientific evidence that green Gatorade improves your breast milk. I will tell you though that if you're drinking a little extra fluids through the day and the problem was you needed more fluids, well, green Gatorade is as good as anything else. Um, lactation cookies, excellent nutritional snack, maybe won't increase supply, but certainly could support your supply. So, there are also some prescription medications that some OB physicians will use to help support a milk supply. But again, when you get to that level of milk support, you need to be working one-on-one -on -one with your lactation consultant. And, and we're available to you guys by phone all the time, seven days, seven days a week. We're there doing normal office hours. And if you leave us messages, we're going to call you back the next morning. I have moms that call and leave messages at two o'clock in the morning. Um, and so I call them back as soon as I come into the office. So yeah, that voicemail is there for you. We're there for you um, to, to help you with that milk supply concern. Paula, will you tell our ladies about some of the outpatient lactation support? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the lactation center, uh, it was established back in um, 1994, and it is currently housed in Medical Plaza One, which is that large office, physician office complex that is on the other side of Highway 80 from the main hospital. The lactation center sees patients by appointment. Uh, well, currently, because of COVID, we're not able to have our office open on the weekend. So we are open Monday through Friday for outpatient visits by appointment. And many of our mothers, we assist to set up a, a, a first time appointment before you ever leave the hospital. So if you go home on a, a Wednesday, then we will help you set up an appointment to come see us on a Friday because you really find that you want um, to see how things are going about two days after you've been discharged from the hospital. You've had a chance to get home, settle into your own environment, and at that point in time, you begin to come up with questions you didn't even know you had um, while you were at the hospital. But one of the things we do in that outpatient newborn visit, we check the baby's weight, because the best way to know if your baby's getting food is do they pee, do they poop, do they sleep, say an hour, Ish between feet and are they gaining some weight? All babies lose weight for the first six days. So that's why we want to keep an eye on that with you. Baby weight loss should be sort of a slow control downhill, but it should never be like fall off the side of the cliff. So we set up to see you guys for that outpatient visit when the baby's a couple of days old. The other things we do at the lactation center, we um, check for jaundice. We can actually use the little skin meter. It's like a little flashlight that meters how much of the bilirubin jaundice is in the baby's skin. If that level seems to be a little high, we can do your baby's um, lab work right there in our lactation office. We, we try to avoid sending newborns into like a regular lab um, we, we want to be able to provide that service for you guys. We can measure how much milk the baby drinks at the breast. We have this really fancy scale. measures down to like the one gram. So we weigh your baby with their tummy empty. You nurse your baby. If you're having any concerns with positioning latch, we're going to help you tweak those. And then we measure the baby when they're through eating, and that fancy smancy scale of ours can measure down to the one gram. It will tell us how much milk your baby drinks. So we can we can take a lot of information um, to support that the baby's getting 
everything they need or the baby is still needing um, some additional calories and we can help you create a feeding plan to meet the baby's calorie needs. The other things we do, we have breast pump parts and equipment for Medela parts and Amida pump, uh, Medela pumps and Amida pumps. There's a lot of pumps out there, and I think breast pumps is going to be a topic for another day. Um, that I, that's what I've been told. And so just know that we are very familiar with the pumps out there on the market, and we do have moms that come to us for pumping assistance frequently. Um, we also have um, all sorts of long-term breastfeeding assistance. We work with tongue ties, lip ties, we help moms who are needing things like, um, uh, do they have maybe signs of mastitis? Are they having plugged up? Are they having true breastfeeding um, medical concerns? We do all of that in our outpatient care. I see you guys. Hi. You can't see me. I'm sorry. I appreciate you, Paula, talking with us about, we know this isn't all inclusive, but. Are we good? Are we on? Okay. We really appreciate your time, Paula. We know this is an, an all-inclusive class on breastfeeding, but we definitely wanted you to touch base with, with, with these women. And again, we, we can read, we can do a whole thing on breastfeeding if y'all are interested. It's definitely one of the topics that is something we want to continue to talk about with y'all because we get a lot of questions about it. So first, I just want to open it up. Does anyone have any last minute questions before we wrap up for today? Um, while you're thinking, you can type them in or you can go ahead and speak them out as well. We're wanting to touch base about next, next visit or next week. We're going to dive into labor. So we're going to kind of talk about what to expect. Um, you know, how do you know if you're in labor? What are the labor signs? Um, what is going to happen when you come to the hospital? We kind of went over some of that. But we can kind of talk through some additional things. Um, we can touch on birth plans as well. We want to talk about unmedicated birth and medicated birth, what both of those options would look like. Um, and then again, we're going to be opening it up for questions. So this would be a great time if you have any questions about labor. We're going to go into that next week, and we're really excited about this topic. So <clears throat> do we have any questions? Nope? Okay. All right, ladies. If there's not any questions at this time, we certainly want to thank you for joining us again today and look forward to next week's presentation. It'll be the same time, same place. So please make sure you stay connected with us and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you all ladies. Bye guys. Stay Bye, ladies. safe.